Lee Chantel. Um, take it away. Thank you, John. I'm going to talk about my research for my PhD on autonomous vehicles. And there's a bit about electric vehicles in there too. So you'll be excited about that. So when people think about the future of transport, what do you think? So some people, it might be high-speed trains. What about better public transport? Maybe for us in here, it's more electric vehicles. Wheel <laughs> for what? Wheelchair. Okay, cool. Whatever your future looks like. And um, for a lot of people, though, it is autonomous vehicles. And fully autonomous vehicles, in case you're not aware, that just means that the vehicle does everything for you at the highest level, okay? So you don't have to do anything at all. And the reason that that can happen is because there's all networks that work in conjunction with that. So from traffic lights, charging stations, and it's able to sense other vehicles and pedestrians too. And then that makes all that information comes together and then that makes all the driving decisions. And so we've had all these recent technological breakthroughs like um, artificial intelligence and electric vehicles. And that's making people think that we're on the cusp of autonomous vehicles, fully autonomous vehicles. And when that happens, there's a heap of benefits. So people are saying that more autonomous vehicles will be better mobility for other people, um, better access to being able to be driven, um, and that will be less greenhouse gases. But a lot of that is in the distant future when it is um, shared and fully autonomous. So not one of the earlier stages of autonomy. And then there's a heap of challenges as well on the other side of the coin. And these mostly involve um, aspects around privacy, how data is collected, how it's secured, um, less public transport, and even more cars might be used. So there's this discrepancy at the moment in the research between the utopian views and the dystopian views. So you've got aspects saying that technology will save us. And on the other hand, you've got technology will destroy us. So I'm really interested in the bits in the middle. So what's the reality of the situation? That's more interesting to me. So at the moment, you've got a heap of studies that lump all those different categories of autonomy together. And they're trying to say that that means one thing when it could mean different things for the different stages. Um, they're misrepresenting technology capabilities and the required infrastructure. Um, and they're focusing on individual views and behaviours and disregarding anything related to social aspects except for ethics. And if you think about different people that work in different industries, they all have different views on what's important. Um, they all have different beliefs, attitudes, and this can influence um, impact things that are incentivized and decentivized. So we've seen that with EVs, right? Um, how people view electric vehicles depends on what they do with that or what they want to do. So that's really important to identify and explore these views that different people have. Um, and that's um, helping us to prepare for and maybe even influence how the electric, how the autonomous vehicles will be rolled out. So I'm interested in looking at the reality. So at the moment, technology is outpacing where the government is with a lot of legislation. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that with um, artificial intelligence, for example. And there's a history of slow response to new tech technologies around transport. There's a heap of misrepresentation and exaggerations of the autonomous vehicle capabilities. And these aspects can undermine trust. So for example, when you're told that your Tesla will do all these things for you and you get in it and something happens and you crash, um, you're like, oh, okay, that's not what I was sold. And um, these experiences can influence expectations for tomorrow. And I'm using electric vehicles as a precursor to some of those because I think it's really interesting. 
So the continuous deployment of electric vehicles helps to identify similar challenges that might impact autonomous vehicles. And this is a really novel um, area to look into, which people love hearing about in research. Um, it's still growing, consequences are unknown, and it impacts various industries in various ways. So this is a bit about the framework that I'm using for my research, and it's called the socio-technical systems method or theory. And the thing that's really interesting here is if you think about technology, this area here, and you think about, okay, we've got something that's coming out in society now, and it might be ready in a technology way, right? But if people aren't willing to accept it, as in social, then what's going to happen? We've seen this happen with electric vehicles, right? We've seen a lot of pushback from certain people about certain technologies that are available. So when you get that right, that's called socio-technical system joint optimization, and that's what we're aiming for, okay? But a lot of people are focusing on the technical aspects without the social. So I'm interested in how that interacts. And then there's also some outside influences, and they can include things like the government, big tech, how businesses make decisions, and even things like infrastructure. So I've done two studies with focus groups. And my first study looked at autonomous vehicles and the research questions. So the main aim of that study was to find out what a variety of Australians views were if they believe themselves or the industry they worked in could be impacted by the autonomous vehicle rollout in Australia. And we were looking at perceived benefits and potential challenges. And here's the participants that I had. I had 82 participants over 29 focus groups, which is a lot and excessive. And it took me a long time to go through the data, some of you know. <laughs> Um, and you can see um, the participants, mostly male, 78%. And we had all Australian states and territories represented with a heap of people from Queensland. Also, this is showing the different um, professions that people worked in. Most of the people involved were from technology and cybersecurity, transport, logistics and fleet, and lawmaking and government. And you would also be interested that 42% of people who I interviewed from in my focus groups owned an electric vehicle. And the methodology that I used, so once I got these focus groups happening with all these people, then I got transcripts. So once I had edited and de-identified the transcripts, I printed them all out and it was over 400 pages of transcripts, a lot. And this is how I did it here. So if you can see some of my writing, I'm coding the information from the transcripts. And um, instead of just looking for keywords, like say technology or environment, I'm reading to find what the theme is, what the main idea is from that information. And then I'm using that to work out the major themes and sub themes. And then it started to look like this. And so the findings from that were with my thematic analysis. So I used a process called Codebook Thematic Analysis, and we identified six themes and 18 sub-themes. And I'll just say about the first theme, which was called Reimagining Society. And this is where people thought that um, autonomous vehicles could bring really great ideas and new things into society and um, travel that were mostly positive. And there was some different sub-themes as well around efficiency, social inclusion, non-ownership of cars, climate, and also what is the real issue to solve. And I also, with all that information that I got from the focus group interviews, I had a lot of unexpected findings that weren't related to that question that was talking about autonomous vehicles. And so um, one of them was on I got a lot of information on electric vehicles, so that became my study too. And I had two other aspects that are not part of my thesis, but we'll, I'm working on with some uh, research assistants as papers. 
And so this is an example of my findings mapped onto the socio-technical systems theory. And if you have a look here, we're looking at perceived benefits. So these are some aspects that people raised in my focus groups that were the benefits of autonomous vehicles. And they're the orange bits here. So you can see one theme in the social section has a lot of benefits and one theme in the technical subsystem has one benefit. So these would be areas like, say, um, climate-related social inclusion that would be good to promote more. And then when we look at the challenges, what can you see in that, just from the orange? Lots, hey, and throughout all of the themes. So the other two, we only had a few, but the challenges here are throughout. And if you've also noticed, these three here only are challenges. And they relate to cybersecurity. Oh, where's my little thing? Cybersecurity in the technical systems and the external systems has government related. And then the one at the bottom is big tech. So they would be areas that really need um, to be worked on at the moment. My clicker's not working now, Les. So we do need. Oh, there we go. Did you do that or me? You did that. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You probably might have, yeah. <laughs> and so good segue into electric vehicles, which was my study too. So many of the participants that I interviewed were um, equating electric vehicles with autonomous vehicles. And as electric vehicles are present now in Australia, I think it's really um like interesting to see what exists now that might be benefits or challenges that need to be sorted out now to see how things might happen in the future. And here's a couple of quotes here. So Paris Marx, um, they say that electrification is an integral piece of the auto-oriented transport visions that tech executives are talking about. And also there's a lot of researchers that see that the future of vehicles is when you have a smart electric car running on green energy, utilizing various levels of automation up to a fully autonomous vehicle. Next to his left. And then so for my study too, um, the question here I asked was about the perspectives of Australian stakeholders and society on the continuous development of electric vehicles that might impact how autonomous vehicles are rolled out. The perceived benefits and potential challenges and those same 82 participants and the methodology and what I did were used, but this was done as a separate analysis and coded at the end. And the findings here, um, we had four different themes and 13 sub-themes. And one of the themes was a theme called, Can We Make It? And that explores that participants believe that Australia is just not ready at the moment and a lot needs to be addressed. And this starts with the Australian government, policies and laws, and it links to businesses and industry, like training for new technologies, updating infrastructure and emergency response. There's also marketing hype on the reality of EV technology capabilities that's also discussed. And there's a few sub themes there. Mm -hmm. So here's the findings. Um, and this is the potential challenges. So as you can see with the AV um, uh, mapping, the challenges are throughout the whole areas too. But if you have a look, pretend I have my little um, red dot, you can see some of them, as well as having a challenge, they also say a solution. So for example, with lack of understanding, that's seen as a challenge, but a solution would be if people don't understand about electric vehicles, we'll give them a physical drive in the car and then that helps them understand it more. And then the perceived benefits, they're also scattered throughout the four themes and um, they would be the areas that need to be promoted more, okay? And so those two studies that I had with those themes that I got and the mapping that I showed you, that is then linking 
to um, a questionnaire. So that's my next step, which I'm in the process of at the moment. So that is informing the questions that I ask in my questionnaire. And we're aiming to look at similarities and differences that were raised with those stakeholders, so 82 people from different industries, to a broader Australian audience. So a lot of different types of people. And the questions I ask will be related to driving and technology experience, autonomous and electric vehicles, and some demographic information. So I'll be comparing things like EV owners versus non-EV owners, different professions, things like that. Um, and I know you'll ask me what I'm going to do next, so I thought I'd have a slide with that one. Um, so I've got a um, extension for my scholarship to the sec 22nd of August, so I'm planning on putting in my thesis around that time. And um, originally I aimed to be a lecturer in cyber psychology, which is my passion. And cyber psychology, if you just think of um, psychology, how we think, feel and behave, and you mix that with say technology and um, digital devices, that's the stuff I'm interested in. So I come from a consulting speaking background in and doing the cyber psychology, and now I can talk about disruptive technologies. Um, I'll see what's on offer. I'm sure there'll be lots of opportunities and I'm going to have a little bit of a break in Indonesia first. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess lecturing open to, I do a lot of workshop creations and course um, creation. I've been really interested in the methodology, like how I, I designed the studies that I did and helping people learn that because in psychology, we weren't taught some of the methods I used really well. So that's been interesting for me. And I also want to publish my findings in a book. So I, if you would like to um, get information when my survey's out, there's a QR code, but I also will send the information to John. And um, yes, yeah, so that hopefully got to work on a few things. We're piloting it next week. So hopefully by next month. And yeah, if you have questions, let me know. <laughs>